Okay, so our next little heuristic is 25 very short ideas on writing a book that changes the world and your life as a nonfiction author, artist, and entrepreneur. So we're going to cover this quickly. You should have the uh, handout below, and we're going to go from left to right. A tiny book builds a bridge between your words and your work. Start small, think series or scale. Begin with the end in mind. The procrastinator's paradox. When you commit to more than one, it's easier to get the first one done. Your message is more important than the medium. In other words, draw it, write it, Speak it. It doesn't matter. If you think you're a terrible writer, speak your book. If you think you are too shy to speak your book and you don't like to write, but you're an artist like many folks in our community, simply draw your book out. Use whatever skills and tools and gifts that you have to communicate the core idea or the billboard sort of message that you want to convey to your ideal audience or your quintessential client community. And that leads us to to the next a little point, which is don't let other people define what it means to be an author, right? Many folks are in the uh, you know, self-publishing and in the more, especially in the more traditional publishing world, are really, really snotty, snobby, and, uh, you know, quite finicky with respect to what they think uh, or who they think is really qualified to call oneself uh, an author. And this is just superficial uh, specious silliness that one ought not to care about uh, either on their side or on your side. So speak it if you must, write it, draw it, sketch it. It really doesn't matter what other people think. You are writing a nonfiction tiny book to build your own brand and business, not to, you know, sort of, um, you know, be popular with snotty, snobby people who are often some of the shittiest and least interesting writers on the planet. Uh, The next one, number nine, I think this is, uh, it doesn't matter, just follow this from the left to right. Your outline is the enemy if you're writing for business. And essentially all that means to me is instead of an outline, which I like to think of as as an endless outline where people just kind of add more and more and more stuff in this very, uh, you know, fugazi attempt to be organized with their book, you instead, if you're writing a tiny book for business, you need what we call a content cornerstone instead. And this is the firm foundation of all of your niche knowledge and industry expertise organized in one structured silo and published in one place. And the silo piece there is really important insofar as the content cornerstone allows you to recognize that you have far more uh, or, or you have you have many more books or courses or digital products in you than you thought simply by dint of using very siloed and structured ways of going deeper into each topic and subtopic uh, that your audience or your community really wants to know uh, to you know affect some change or transformation in their own lives and again I repeat this is Nonfiction books for business, tiny books, big ideas. This is not about, you know, writing fiction or stories or essays on uh, things happening in the world. People are inspired by words. This is true, but we are only transformed by dint of experiences. And again, the 
example that I like to use because sometimes people find this hard to actually, you know, apply to their life is you can read 20 books on lifting weights or getting in shape or, you know, doing, uh, you know, body weight exercises or whatever it may be. And you can know everything there is to know about those exercises, but you are not transformed by having read the book, you're only transformed by engaging with the exercises. Your body doesn't change by virtue of osmosis and learning, you know, how to do inverted push-ups, something I probably uh, would embarrass myself if I tried. But nonetheless, you know, you're, if, you're, if you're not lifting weights, you're not building muscles. If you're not meditating, no matter how many books on meditation that you've read, you're not changing or transforming your mind. So we are inspired by words, and your book ought to do that. It ought to inspire your audience and invite them to uh, engage in an experience in the world that you offer. That's actually sort of the main message of this whole approach to writing tiny books for business. You don't want to inspire them to go find somebody else to teach them or to lead them or to help them. You want that person to be you. You need a transform transformation a trigger, and this is an aha insight or epiphany or a light bulb moment, and you also need a transformation turnstile, which is in my uh, parlance a sacred space where people walk out different or differently by virtue of having engaged with you and your expertise. This could be a, a community, it could be a cohort, it could be one-on-one -on -one coaching, it could be a cause that inspires or lights a fire under uh, you know, the, the rear ends of people who are in your orbit or a cause that you're passionate about or you think is important, you know, anything like that. It is something, the turnstile experience is people walk out differently than how they came in, again, by virtue of engaging with you in a more intimate and, you know, experiential uh, way. Uh, the last couple ones of these, which you can now see at the bottom, on the bottom uh, part of the graph, create more than you consume. So important. Uh, this was super important in my own sort of, uh, you know, kind of evolution as a creator, rather than like reading, reading, learning, learning, reading, learning, just actually getting your face muddy, making mistakes and ignoring, you know, gurus and gimmicks and, you know, all that sort of bright and shiny object culture, super important, especially when you're just starting out. I pay attention to none of that stuff uh, anymore. I essentially just create. And, you know, when I, if I find myself in a space where I'm trying to learn something that looks bright and shiny and that someone is teaching that's a shortcut, let's say, or a hack or, you know, some sort of end around, I immediately have a mindfulness alarm in my own kind of creative cognitive arsenal that tells me to stop to you know, go back to, to, to the beginning and to ignore that stuff because it's always doomed to distract and to disappoint. The pursuit of perfection is the enemy of achievement. Don't spend your time trying to make everything perfectly choreographed or perfectly uh, organized or perfect in any uh, way. Nothing is going to be more of an impediment to your own growth as an artist, as an author, and I would argue as an entrepreneur than pursuing perfection as the ultimate aim or objective. It just doesn't exist and it only serves to, you know, kind of get us into this mindset where we're procrastinating rather than publishing. Reading a book on meditation may inspire you to want to meditate, but nothing changes in your life until you actually do the thing that the book 
inspired you to want to do. So this is, again, touching on this other uh, topic above with respect to the transformation turnstile and the idea that people are inspired by words, but we are all ultimately only truly transformed by experience. So don't allow yourself to believe for a second that you're going to write something that by itself is going to transform the lives of your ideal audience or your quintessential client community or your niche neighbors, your professional peers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't work that way, at least in my two decades of experience with writing and creating and working uh, myself in the world, you know, in, in the service of improving myself. There's no book that's ever done anything f- more for me than inspired me to want to actually do a deeper dive into a topic or an area or explore an idea in greater detail, either with myself, uh, you know, alone or if possible or, you know, uh, preferentially with somebody who has a lot more experience than I do, who's already done the thing and can light a lamp for me or lead or guide or direct me in the direction of something that, you know, is a dream or a goal or a passion or something that excites me. So the same thing is true for you. And don't over obsess or obsess at all about getting ready, just create, just make stuff, just publish, you know, get into a habit of shipping something every day, whether it's perfect, whether it's good enough, whether, um, you know, whether you're proud of it in some way, it doesn't even matter. Make mistakes, get your face muddy, learn on the fly, and most important, stop learning as a sort of professional procrastinator and start creating. You don't need a publisher nor anybody's permission to change the world with your work. You only need to start to actually put your work out into the world. Teach what you know, do what you love, wake up the world with your work If you're interested in creating with us in 2025, starting in December, we'll be doing 30-day cohorts for creators, authors, and entrepreneurs, folks who want to write tiny books for Amazon, folks who want to write tiny books to sell digitally on your own website to your own audience, and folks who want to teach, lead, mentor, uh, create, and really build an ethical, fun, and purpose-driven business that brings us together as a community and that makes our lives better and the lives of our audience better as well. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening. And as always, have a wonderful day.